Now the country is testing its laser weapon that could change the face of battle. A global arms race is heating up. These are weapons that are said to be faster, stealthier, even unstoppable. In a move that has sent ripples of concern across the globe, two formidable military powers, Russia and China, have recently forged an alliance that has raised eyebrows in diplomatic circles. The partnership is born out of a shared perception of common threats and adversaries, and the two countries are planning to co-develop a new devastating weapon. As these two giants combine their scientific and technological capabilities, the international community is left to grapple with the unsettling question, what does this collaboration mean for the United States? states and its Western allies. Join us as we discuss how Russia and China are working closely on a new satellite laser system. Since President Xi Jinping assumed office in 2012, he has placed a stronger emphasis on enhancing the military capabilities, especially in the domains of space and information. And today, China has achieved so many breakthroughs in laser technology that it scares even the United States. According to the 2019 Chinese Defense White Paper, space is a crucial area in global strategic competition where China faces challenges and opportunities. The White Paper also underscored the significance of space in enhancing Joint Operations Command, which is the ability to coordinate and integrate different branches of the military in complex and dynamic situations. Also, the White Paper stressed the importance of space in ensuring reliable and efficient control during emergency responses such as natural disasters, humanitarian crisis, or military conflicts. Furthermore, the White Paper highlighted the role of space in effectively accomplishing urgent, tough, and dangerous tasks such as reconnaissance, surveillance, communication, navigation, and missile defense. And so, the country has been rapidly developing its space and counter space capabilities, as well as reorganizing its institutions to support its ambitious goals. One of the main drivers of China's space advancement is its focus on fractionalization, which means using space assets to enhance its military operations across different domains. One of the key institutional changes that China has made is the creation of the PLA Strategic Support Force, also called the PLASF. This is a new branch of the military that combines the strategic functions of space, cyber, electronic, and psychological warfare. The PLASF is directly under the command of the Central Military Commission, the highest military authority in China. The PLASF's mission is to provide centralized support to the PLA in terms of information, intelligence, and communication. By establishing the PLASF, China has streamlined and integrated its strategic capabilities that were previously scattered among various departments. The PLASF is expected to play a vital role in China's military modernization and its pursuit of regional and global influence. Since then, China has been launching rockets into space at an unprecedented rate. Despite the pandemic, China performed 34 space launches in 2020, more than any other country in the world. China has also achieved some remarkable feats in space exploration, such as sending a probe to the far side of the moon, collecting lunar samples, and completing its own global navigation system. China's space ambitions do not stop there. The country is also planning to send humans to the moon and Mars in the future. Moreover, China has recently tested a reusable space plane, which could lower the cost and increase the frequency of space flights. China's space Space plane is a significant advancement in space technology as it requires a high level of precision and control to glide back to Earth. Russia is aware of all the progress that China has made, and this is why it wants to work closely with China to develop new satellite laser systems. According to reports, Russian President Vladimir Putin told a senior Chinese military official that Moscow and Beijing should expand their cooperation on military satellites and other prospective defense technologies. Putin and Zhang discussed various aspects of bilateral military cooperation, such as joint exercises, arms sales, and strategic coordination. However, Putin highlighted the need to expand their collaboration on military satellites and other advanced defense systems, which he said are the priority areas for the future. Without elaborating, Putin said, I mean space, including high orbit assets and new perspective types of weapons that will ensure strategic security of both Russia and the People's Republic of China. Military satellites are crucial for intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, communication, and navigation. Both Russia and China have been developing and launching their own military satellites 
satellites as well as testing anti-satellite weapons that can disrupt or destroy enemy satellites. By working together on military satellites, Russia and China could enhance their capabilities and counter the dominance of the United States in space. Putin mentioned that the cooperation between Russia and China is not aimed at creating a military alliance against any other country, but rather at stabilizing the international situation. He said that Russia and China aren't forming military alliances reminiscent of Cold War structures, but their collaboration is a significant factor in stabilizing the international situation. Of course, he wasn't going to come out and openly proclaim that Russia is joining forces with China to fight against the United States. Putin has been open about sharing highly sensitive military technologies with China, which he said has helped China improve its defense capabilities. For example, in October of 2019, he revealed that Russia had assisted China in developing an early warning system for detecting ballistic missile launches. This system involves ground-based radar and satellites, a technology previously exclusive to Russia and the U.S. China, on its part, has expressed its friendship and solidarity with Russia, especially in the face of Western sanctions and pressure. China has criticized the sanctions imposed by the U.S. and its allies on Russia over its annexation of Crimea and its involvement in the Ukrainian conflict. China has also accused NATO and the U.S. of provoking Russia's military actions in Ukraine while trying to maintain a neutral stance in the dispute. Moreover, China has supported Russia on various regional and global issues such as the Syrian civil war, the Iranian nuclear deal, and the North Korean nuclear crisis. China has also backed Russia on its issues related to Taiwan, which China considers a breakaway province that must be reunited with the mainland. China has opposed any foreign interference or support for Taiwan's independence and has thanked Russia for respecting its sovereignty and territorial integrity. The two leaders, Putin and Xi, have developed a close personal bond that has helped them overcome their historical differences and coordinate their policies on various issues. One of the main areas of cooperation between Russia and China is the military sphere. The two countries have been conducting joint military exercises, sharing advanced weapons and technologies, and supporting each other on security matters. The military cooperation between Russia and China is seen as a way to balance the power and influence of the West, especially the United States, which they perceive as a threat to their interest and sovereignty. Xi's visit to Moscow in March is a sign of the importance that China attaches to its relationship with Russia. The two leaders signed a number of agreements on trade, energy, and technology, and also celebrated the 70th anniversary of their diplomatic ties. Putin praised Xi as his best and bosom friend and awarded him Russia's highest state honor, the Order of St. Andrew. Putin's recent trip to Beijing was another demonstration of the strong ties between Russia and China. Putin attended a summit on China's Belt and Road Initiative, a massive infrastructure project that aims to connect Asia, Europe, and Africa through a network of roads, railways, ports, and pipelines. Putin expressed his support for the initiative, saying that it would benefit the region and the world. He also met with Xi and discussed various issues of mutual concern, such as the situation in North Korea, Iran, and Venezuela. Putin thanked Zhang for the warm reception that he received in Beijing and asked him to convey his gratitude to Xi. He said that he valued the very friendly personal ties that he had with Xi and that they contributed to the development of Russia-China relations. In recent years, Russia and China have also conducted joint war games involving their naval, air, and ground forces. They have also held joint patrols by long-range bombers over the Sea of Japan and the East China Sea, sending a message to their neighbors and rivals. Additionally, they have participated in joint drills on each other's territory, such as the Vostok 2018 exercise in Russia and the Peace Mission 2019 exercise in China. In a conversation with Zhang, Putin mentioned that NATO has been attempting to extend its influence into the Asia-Pacific region, characterizing it as an attempt to go beyond its geographical sphere of influence. He emphasized that Russia and China are responding to this development in a calm and balanced way, focusing on reinforcing their security through collaboration efforts, including joint air force and navy drills. He said the U.S. has increasingly drawn the alliance members into inciting tensions in the Asia-Pacific region and tried to create new military political alliances, including countries of the region, proceeding from its own egoistic interests. He also said that Russia and China were responding in a calm and balanced way and working to strengthen their security with joint air forces and navy drills. Zhang hailed Moscow for resisting Western pressure, saying that the Russian Federation under your leadership is standing firm in the face of Western sanctions, showing that you and Russia won't be bent by any difficulties. The Chinese side expresses its respect for you for this, he said. This partnership makes sense for the two 
nations because China has possibly the most advanced laser weapon system in the world and Russia wants this. Also, Russia has the most nuclear weapons in the world and China could benefit from this. One of the technologies that China has developed is a microwave machine called Relativistic Klystron Amplifier, RKA, which could potentially jam or destroy satellites in space. The RKA is a device that can generate a powerful wave burst in the microwave frequency range, specifically in the Ka band. The Ka band is a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that is increasingly used for both civil and military purposes, such as satellite communications, radar, and navigation. The RKA can produce a wave burst of up to 5 megawatts, which is equivalent to the power output of a large wind turbine. This wave burst can be directed at a target in space, such as a satellite, and interfere with its functions or damage its components. Although China denies that the RKA is a directed energy weapon, some experts believe that the RKA could be used as a weapon if it were scaled up and deployed in space. A directed energy weapon is a system that uses concentrated electromagnetic energy such as lasers, microwaves, or particle beams rather than kinetic energy such as bullets, missiles, or bombs to damage or destroy enemy equipment and or personnel in a physical conflict. If the RKA were built at a larger scale and mounted on a satellite or a spacecraft, it could send beams strong enough to rip through metallic materials moving at high speeds, such as satellites or missiles. This could give China an edge over its rivals in space, such as the United States, which relies heavily on its satellite networks for its military and civilian operations. That's not all. Some military experts in China also claim to have made a massive breakthrough in laser weapon technology by developing a new cooling mechanism that allows high-energy lasers to function infinitely without wasting heat buildup. Laser weapons use concentrated beams of light to damage or destroy targets such as missiles, drones, or aircraft. However, laser weapons also generate a lot of heat, which can damage their own components and reduce their effectiveness. To prevent this, laser weapons need a cooling system that can dissipate the excess heat without affecting the quality and stability of the laser beam. The scientist at the National University of Defense Technology in Changsha, Hunan Province, said that they have invented a new cooling system that can completely eliminate the harmful heat produced by high-energy laser operation. The new cooling system uses a novel design that improves the structure and gas flow of the laser weapon, reducing turbulence, vibration, and mirror contamination. The new cooling system enables the laser weapon to fire indefinitely without losing power or precision, according to the scientists. They said that this could significantly change the face of warfare as laser weapons could have longer engagement times, longer ranges, and more damage while also saving costs and logistics. This is definitely alarming for the U.S. and the West, and they need to do something about this as soon as possible. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section.